Hey, everybody. Welcome to the play call for today. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist and Pro Trader at InTheMoneyStocks.com and VerifiedInvestingCrypto.com. What I want to talk about today is the jobless claims data that we got this morning. This is really, really important. So what we saw was jobless claims touched 228,000. And again, this is how many people are filing for unemployment. Now, why is this important? Well, basically, the one sticking point about the economy staying strong, which has kept the Federal Reserve hiking interest rates is that jobs continue to be plentiful and people are not losing their jobs. This data today is showing us that may be changing. In addition, we saw continuing claims, which are people that are continually claiming unemployment, meaning unemployed for an extended period of time. That was also worse than expected. Now, if you compile this with the ADP private sector number yesterday, which was the private sector employment data, we also saw a worst, worse number. Now, again, the key here is understanding what this means. Now, this means that essentially the Fed will feel less likely to need to hike interest rates. Now, normally we would say, yippee, this is great for the stock market. This is great for crypto. But the problem is if inflation remains hot, then they can't lower rates. And that's the addiction that this market has. So what I want to show you next is we're going to jump into some charts. And in this chart, we're going to look at the S&P 500 on a weekly basis and the NASDAQ 100 on a weekly basis and why the warning signs are telling us there's a bigger breakdown to come. So number one, remember, jobs data is starting to get weaker. All right, that's telling us the economy is getting weaker. Number two, the Fed, yeah, they're probably not going to hike much more in terms of interest rates, but because inflation is still too high, they can't lower interest rates. That's a problem because it's going to keep interest rates higher with a weakening economy. And that's what the market doesn't want. Now, if we look at this chart, this is the weekly S&P chart. Look at this trend line that goes all the way back to basically 2009. That was the Great Recession, guys. That was a point where unemployment skyrocketed. We were freaking out. Lehman Brothers was failing. Bear Stearns, all of that mess. The bottom line is look at over here. Recently, we've hit this line and we've bounced up. The problem is, check this out, guys. Look in that upper, upper corner there. We're actually creating what is called a bear flag or wedge pattern. We can connect these lows here. The problem is you have the bigger down move like this. This is what's called a bear wedge pattern, the sharp sell-off and consolidation. It leads to a break. You break this longer term trend line, that's where panic and fear is going to increase exponentially. We're talking about a move down of substantial proportions on the S&P, potentially 25 more percent to the downside. And again, everyone's been rooting for the jobs market to slow down. Doesn't make sense to me, but that's what they've been rooting for because they want the printing presses to start up again. The Fed is handcuffed. They are handcuffed because they can't drop rates or print money again until inflation gets under, under wraps, under 2% essentially. If we look at the Qs, same thing, guys. Long-term trend line, we've hammered on it a couple times. If we come in again here and break, watch out below. That is going to be a major issue. So the bottom line is, guys, you have to keep in mind that this market is at a point where it's at pivotal level. If we see the jobs numbers continue to weaken, I do predict, and this is economic projections based on probabilities and technicals, we will be in a recession by the second half of 2023, and you should expect some serious declines in the equity markets. Now, will that be good for gold? The answer is yes. Gold should continue up. That's going to be a positive for gold. Bitcoin is a tricky one. Bitcoin, I still don't have us confirming it at above 30,000. So we'll watch that level and we'll see again. If it confirms, then I think the low is in. If not, and we're not there yet, we have to think that there's still downside because it is a risk asset as of now, even though I do believe the long-term case for Bitcoin is absolutely a no-brainer. We still have that situation where Bitcoin could go lower in the near term. My name is Gareth Soloway. Thank you for tuning in. And again, come find me at inthemoneystocks.com and verifiedinvestingcrypto.com. Take care.